Hi. The immune system is distributed around the body in multiple tissues and lymph nodes are part of that. Inside lymph nodes we find lymphocytes, the cells of the immune system and other bits and bobs. And this is where an immune response can be mounted either locally or throughout the body. And in the neck there are a number of lymph nodes. Um, I thought I'd do a video looking at the anatomy of the lymph nodes of the neck because, you know, I've got a vague understanding of where they are, but there are a lot of ways of naming and grouping these things. So we're going to look at the lymph nodes of the neck and name them anatomically where they are um, and what they're in relation to and stuff. How are we going to do this? Well, I find that whenever you read about the lymph nodes of the neck, it gets a bit confusing and a bit messy um, because there are a number of different ways of describing it. I'm going to try and tidy that up. We're going to use <laughs> coloured Play-Doh and we're going to put them on a model, right? So we will think about the direction of flow to start with uh, and we will um, look at the superficial group and then we'll look at the deep group and because we've looked at the direction of flow, we'll know where we're going. We'll highlight a couple that clinically are particularly relevant because they can be markers of uh, stuff coming from parts of the, the head. All right, that's the aim. Good luck. This anatomy is important for a number of reasons, but in particular, I said that these are the organs of the immune system. So when you have an infection here, then uh, the lymph nodes will be mounting a local immune response and they are quite soft. They're maybe like a centimeter, centimeter and a half in diameter. But when they are doing their immune system job, then there are cells in there proliferating, they're active, they get bigger. And when you palpate these lymph nodes around the neck, they feel enlarged. In Britain, the colloquialism is, ooh, doctor, my glands are up. They're not glands though, they're lymph nodes. And that's an important idea as well because there are salivary glands around here. So don't mix up the salivary glands, which are producing saliva into the oral cavity with the lymph nodes, which are draining lymph, draining fluid from the tissues of the head and neck and presenting them to the immune system and doing immune system stuff, okay? And this, the second good reason is cancer. So uh, cancer cells from whatever tissues in the body, but we're thinking head and neck today, um, because the lymphatic system has capillaries that are kind of open-ended, cancer cells can move into the lymphatic system more easily than they can move into, say, blood uh, vessels, which means they can travel around the body within the lymphatic system. They're likely to get lodged in lymph nodes, and if they do, they will proliferate because this is what cancer cells do. So again, the lymph nodes will get bigger, and then, you need to recognize that that lymph node is abnormally large, unlike when it's normally large during an immune response, and remember where that lymph has come from. So that lymph node is enlarged. If it's a cancer, where have the cancer cells come from? And this is, what, this is why the direction of flow is so important. Lymphatic flow is from superficial to deep and from distal to proximal. That's easy to, to, to describe with a limb, distal to proximal. Uh, with a head and neck it's a little bit more awkward, uh, but essentially this here is the internal jugular vein, draining blood from the cranial cavity, face, that sort of thing. This is the subclavian vein, and when they come together they form the brachiocephalic vein. This gets called the venous angle, and in here the thoracic duct will drain lymph from most of the body into this point. So then lymph from the left side of the head and neck will also drain into the vein, the, the venous blood at this venous angle here. That also exists on the other side. Notice this model, we have a deep dissection on the left side, a superficial dissection on the right side. That's gonna be very useful later. But we have the same veins over here. They're just covered by the sternocleidomastoid muscle. So the, the lymph of the right side of the head and neck will drain into the right venous angle, probably with the right lymphatic duct. So that's the direction of flow from 
head to neck to the venous angles on either side. And the tissues of the body are wet. They have water in them, fluid, because cells need that and stuff. That fluid is collected by the lymphatic system, right? Um, so the superficial uh, lymphatics are collecting fluid from superficial tissues and they may stay superficial for a while, but they will at some point connect to deeper lymph nodes. So for example, this is a deep structure here. It's deep to sternocleidomastoid. So those superficial lymphatic vessels and nodes will drain to deeper lymphatic vessels and nodes. That's the direction of flow. Very, very handy to keep in your mind. Let's look at the actual lymph node locations then. Um, all right, I should probably trim my beard for this, shouldn't I? But there is like a superficial ring of lymph nodes and then more in the neck. Um, and they're named anatomically. So there are occipital, um, post-auricular, this being the oracle, also known as mastoid lymph nodes. There's the mastoid process under there, right? Pre-auricular, so before you get to the oracle, or parotid. And then we have uh, submandibular, this being the mandible, and submental, this being the chin, so inferior to the chin, mental. So we have these here, right, let's see if I can make those. Here we go, other than trying to get it to stick, that's, Play-Doh is quite therapeutic, right? So, here's the oracle, the ear. So those are the occipital nodes. Those are the pre-auricular nodes by the mastoid process. They might also get called mastoid nodes. These are parotid nodes or pre-auricular nodes. And look, they are right next to the parotid salivary gland. So don't mix up the lymph nodes with the salivary gland. And then in green under here, we have the submandibular nodes. And again, right next to the submandibular salivary gland. And then here underneath the chin, Underneath the mentum, we have the submental nodes. So that is that superficial ring around the base of the, the head and the, the neck. Now, these are anatomical terms. These are good terms, um, but there are different levels of describing the groups of lymph nodes. You could describe the, all of these as superficial cervical lymph nodes. We've gone to the next level and we've described some groupings, but you may also read other groupings like the parotid nodes get described as superficial and deep parotid nodes. All right, depending upon the level of detail you want to describe to. Okay, now down in the neck, this is the sternocleidomastoid muscle. And I don't know whether you can see in my neck, but there's a vein in the neck called the external jugular vein, which is draining blood from the muscles of the face as much as anything else, which is why it starts to stand up when I, teach, when I talk loudly and constantly. And there are lymph nodes running with the external jugular vein, and there are lymph nodes running with the anterior jugular vein. Um, the lymph nodes running with the external jugular vein are more posterior, so would be called the posterior cervical lymph nodes. And those running with the anterior jugular vein are more anterior, so would be called the anterior superficial cervical lymph nodes. Let me see if I can add those. There we go. So sternocleidomastoid, so this is the posterior triangle of the neck. These are a little bit deeper than I'd like. I'd like to have, you know, <laughs> skin, fascia and that sort of thing on here. But these would be the superficial or the location of the superficial posterior cervical lymph nodes. And these would be the anterior superficial cervical lymph nodes. More blue, more green. So think superficial, you know, pretty close to the skin following the veins. OK, so those are the superficial lymph nodes of the neck. Remember, they're draining down to that venous angle there. If we use this side, we can have a look at where the deep uh, cervical lymph nodes go, are. Ah. Oh, they're already falling off. Right, well, um, okay, so in the deep neck, we can see the larynx, we can see the trachea, thyroid gland. Here's the hyoid bone up here. And we find infrahyoid lymph nodes, pre-laryngeal lymph nodes, pre-tracheal lymph nodes. So think, think about approaching the neck from this direction and then before you get to the larynx, before you get to the trachea, you find lymph nodes. They're very, very deep. And then those uh, pre-tracheal lymph nodes, they're continuous with the paratracheal lymph nodes or paratracheal lymph nodes, which descend down into the chest. So these are very, very deep. They're up against the airway. 
And whilst we can see the trachea here, we can't really see the pharynx, nor the fascial spaces. Um, but there are retropharyngeal lymph nodes. So really, really deep up against the pharynx, which I'm not going to be able to make. But let's put some lymph nodes on here to be illustrative of that, and then we'll approach this. Here we go. So internal jugular vein here, uh, hyoid bone up here, larynx trachea. So look, infrahyoid lymph nodes, pre-laryngeal lymph nodes, and kind of pre-tracheal, paratracheal lymph nodes down here. Now, I said that some of the superficial lymph nodes run with some of the superficial veins, and we also find deep cervical lymph nodes running with the internal jugular vein, which is a very deep vein. The sternocleidomastoid muscle is covering over the major blood vessels of the neck, that is the internal jugular vein, common carotid artery and what have you. So we've taken the sternocleidomastoid muscle off, so we're deep in the neck, and we would find what gets called a terminal collection of deep lymph nodes running with the internal jugular vein. Now, the internal jugular vein and common carotid artery run within the carotid sheath, so a tube of fascia running from the skull down in the neck. And these deep lymph nodes, we find some of them inside the carotid sheath and some of them outside the carotid sheath. I'm just gonna dot some on the internal jugular vein to give a sense of that, all right? So here comes in that direction of flow I was talking about from superficial to deep. It makes sense that there is a collection of deep cervical lymph nodes running with the internal jugular vein, because of course we're working back to this point here, the venous angle, where the lymph will drain through the thoracic duct back into the venous system here. So we're going from superficial from the skin to these deep structures, which are very deep, they're covered by those muscles there. There are a couple of um, deep lymph nodes in a couple of locations of note. Now this here is the omohyoid muscle. Omo meaning shoulder. It's running between the shoulder and the hyoid bone. And up in here we've got the digastric muscle, a muscle with two bellies, digastric. Up here at this location, so deep lymph nodes, at the depth of the internal jugular vein, at the angle of the mandible, but where the digastric muscle and the uh, internal jugular vein cross paths up here uh, is often described as a node, but really it'll be more than one node. Uh, these would be the superior deep cervical lymph nodes, also known as the jugulodigastric nodes. Now, these nodes are draining lymph from the oral cavity, from the pharynx, from the tonsils. So if you palpate this lymph node back here and it's enlarged, that's in response to things that are coming from those regions. If we're worried about cancer, we're thinking about cancer cells that have come from those regions. Now, more inferiorly, where this omohyoid muscle crosses the internal jugular vein, we have some inferior deep cervical lymph nodes, which also get called the jugular omohyoid lymph nodes. And at this level, where that omohyoid muscle is crossing the internal jugular vein, so this is very, very deep and will only be palpated when enlarged, as in the lymph nodes will only be palpated when enlarged, these lymph nodes drain lymph from the tongue. So again, if that's enlarged, you th all right, so those are of note, the jugulodigastric and the jugular omohyoid lymph nodes, but that is the deep collection of cervical lymph nodes. How's that? Those are the lymph nodes of the neck. Um, we can group them as cervical lymph nodes, superficial cervical lymph nodes and deep cervical lymph nodes, or we can group them into the more anatomical groupings that we've discussed here. Um, Surgeons and radiologists will also group them within the neck in different regions differently. They'll use a clinical scale of numbers. Um, they're talking about the same nodes. They're just describing their locations differently because these are people that are looking for pathologically enlarged lymph nodes and lymph nodes that might need to be removed. But this organization relates to that organization. You can link the two together. So 
Lymph nodes are the organs of the immune system. They respond to infection. That's normal inflammation. They're also a a potential route for metastatic disease to spread through. So that's a pathological um, enlargement of these nodes. So anatomically, these are important structures. Clinically, they're important structures. The naming isn't too bad. They're, they're named fairly sensibly. The difficulty is getting like a handle on exactly where they are in that, that the naming convention because it varies so much. But the lymph nodes of the neck, all right? See you next week. Thank you.